Hi folks, this is Dr. Rob Sivers. I'm the Carb Addiction Doc and I am a board certified pediatric surgeon. As such, I have a vested interest in fetuses and young people. Secondly, you probably should as well if you care about the future of our species. Uh, because our species depends on, even though we've got 8 billion people on the planet, on our ability to improve the evolution of the human species. As such, we've taken a massive step backward. In fact, last year, the statistics from the CDC tell us that one in 36 eight-year-olds have diagnosable autism spectrum disorder. And while today's talk is not just about autism spectrum disorder, it is an understanding of what happens in the evolving human brain and also happens in the, in the brain of adults such as myself and getting older. So we have an, uh, an interactive discussion group. And one of the things that... I just wrote um, a, a book chapter in the ketogenic textbook on autism spectrum disorder and human brain development. Um, there's a woman by the name of Sarah Rice who's an editor on that book, and she is part of our group. And as we had the discussion, uh, she said, I recently gave a talk where I touched on maternal metabolic health and the effect on fetal development. It is becoming a matter of urgency, possibly an understatement, to give this problem more attention. A recent paper by Musa et al., you'll see this in the comments, on the effect of the placenta uh, um, on the effect of the placenta in fetal development is troubling in that they report, and this is a societal problem, they report the rates of overweight and obesity as being incredibly high in women of childbearing age, and the, pro the proportion of women presenting to our hospitals who fall into the overweight, obese category while pregnant is over 80%. And where is this? America? No, this is in South Africa, a third world country. Over 80% of pregnant women are obese, overweight or obese, during pregnancy in a third world country, country like South Africa. That is a terrible, terrible, terrible statistic. Didn't it all comments... Recent estimates suggest that in developed countries, more than 50% of pregnancies are in women who are overweight or have obesity. And here's the thing for brain development, DHA, 3 omega fatty acids. 3 omega fatty acids profiles in breast milk vary with diet and appear reduced in mothers with obesity because they eat carbohydrates, not fat. Neurodevelopmental disorders are a massively increasing problem and targeting maternal health and nutritional sufficiency for mothers and infants deserves more attention. Our current food landscape adds to the problem. We know this, but what to do about it is quite overwhelming to contemplate. So that's part of the discussion we've had and you'll see the references down below. Here was my response. I said, Sarah... These are disturbing observations. But let's look for a silver lining to this cloud. While this is indeed a disturbing trend, firstly, the observation that healthcare science is losing its seat at the table that directs health policy and direction is of great concern. U.S. Dietary Guidelines Committee is meeting again, and it is not based on science. It is not based on the science of healthcare. It is based on belief. So increasingly, the dominant forces are the economic pseudoscience of the pharma industry that increasingly focus us on medication remedies rather than the economically unattractive lifestyle uh, remedies that include fasting and manufacture fast. Sorry, that include fast foods and manufactured foods and manufactured nutrition, high in carbohydrates, high in polyunsaturated fatty acids. Nicotine and vaping, opioids and similar drugs, all of which are ultimately synthetic drugs. Think of this, folks. Manu manufactured food, fast food, polyunsaturated fatty acids, those are all synthetically manufactured foods that I call drugs. Synthetic opioids, synthetic nicotine. The order of the day currently is to produce synthetic drugs to support humanity. And on top of the pharmacologic uh, approach to food manufacture, there's a second massive undercurrent 
of religious evangelism into our food and medical education system. It's called lifestyle medicine. And anytime you hear the word lifestyle medicine, you know that that is a religious doctrine that has been insinuated into our food and our medical education system, driving us toward plant-based ideology. So one of the things that has is, that is troubled me is brain development and fetal brain development. And here's a little bit of science behind this. Um, and it's important to understand this if we can approach, approach this from a scientific perspective. The human brain begins to develop in a fetus between five and six weeks of gestation. Okay, um, And we previously thought that the human developing human fetus in the first trimester, first 12 weeks of life, gets all of its nutrition, all of its supplements directly from the mother via the portal vein. That there's this direct provision from the mother to the fetus. And that is true to a certain extent that the umbilical vein, which provides a conduit of food and nutrients and, and things from the mother directly to the fetus is true. But if you think about it, then why do we have a placenta? Placenta is this massive big thing. Um, and all the blood flow from the mother to the baby goes through the placenta, has to cross a placental fetal barrier to get to the baby. And the interesting thing about the brain development is the brain development requires fat, requires DHA, requires ketones, fat ketones and cholesterol and DHA are essential for the rapid development of the human brain, of the fetal brain. And yet, what regulates cholesterol production, what regulates blood sugar production, blood sugar levels, what regulates uh, um, cholesterol production in the fetus is controlled by the liver and the pancreas, but the liver and the pancreas only develop by about 15 or 16 weeks of gestation. So we've got a 10-week, a 10 to 12-week gestational period where the brain is developing, but the pancreas of the fetus cannot regulate that. So who the hell or what the hell is regulating that? Well, we thought it came from the mother. And to a large extent, that's true. But here's something that we now understand. And this is a, uh, a study that, two studies that I'm going to quote to you. The first one is, um, in a study, the first reported high concentration of ketones occurs in the amniotic fluid of humans. This is a study that hasn't even been released yet. So when they looked at amniotic fluid, the fluid that around the baby that gets produced by and from the baby, the ketone levels were 0.6 millimolar. And when they simultaneously studied the mother's blood ketone level, it was 0.1. So there's a six-fold increase in ketones in the, in the amniotic fluid, which comes from the baby. But in those babies, there's no glucagon, there's no pancreas, there's no liver yet producing those ketones. So we know it's not coming from the baby. We know it's not coming from the mother. And this study is incredibly groundbreaking for us. Because it says high placental beta-hydroxybutrate or ketone production is potentially key for producing and maintaining ketone levels in the amniotic fluid. So they are for the first time identifying the placenta as, and a phrase that I've used, a parahepatic organ. In other words, the placenta in those 10 to 12 weeks is acting like a liver, an external liver for the fetus. And what that placenta is doing is, number one, it's providing ketones. Number two is producing cholesterol under the influence of maternal glucagon and maternal insulin. It's producing cholesterol and it's producing DHA from EPA. So the placenta is a hormonally active and a nutrient active organ, basically functioning like the liver and the pancreas, using the mother's hormones and then producing a substrate for the fetus. It's just a beautiful, beautiful system for the fetus to be able to grow. And it explains why the, the babies can be in high concentration of ketosis, these fetuses, while the mother is not necessarily in ketosis. But at the same time, if the mother is insulin resistant, that placenta ain't working. And when the placenta is not able to do its job, because the mother is eating crap and she's insulin resistant or diabetic, has gestational diabetes or prediabetes, that's where those brain abnormalities occur. Furthermore, the role of the placenta is a different study. 
The role of the placenta is a connection between mother and baby to ferry oxygen and nutrients, filter toxins, mingle maternal and fetal immune systems, and other functions is well known. In a new study, neonatologists have demonstrated that placenta plays an even greater role ensuring the proper development of the nervous system by producing allopregnanolone, ALLO, a key hormone required for this process to occur properly. And if the mother is insulin resistant, she does not produce allopregnanolone. So we see this disturbing trend of the maternal diet affecting fetal organic growth, organ growth. So here's an interesting, so now let's take this one step further. And in fact, uh, another good friend of mine, Dr. Fit and Fabulous, Jamie Seaman, who's an obstetrician, she wrote, incredible, I'm an OBGYN and I've had a theory about ketones in pregnancy. Metabolic diseases in pregnancy like preeclampsia and gestational diabetes involve hyperinsulinemia. We know that. I've been wondering if beta-hydroxybutyrate, if ketones, could be more protective to mom and baby than high-dose magnesium sulfate. Wow. So, along those lines, folks, we know that the mother, and, and long established, that the mother should be using prenatal vitamins, especially high folate prenatal vitamins, for neural tube defects and for developing a healthy brain. Those high levels of vitamin C, the B vitamins, the ADEKs, and the essential minerals and vitamins that are in prenatal vitamins essential. Most moms take prenatal vitamins. Now, more and more moms are taking DHA or fish oil because we understand the importance of DHA. That's why these formula manufacturers add them to formula. So a mom that wants a good fetus, a healthy fetus, is taking DHA. But even then, the autism rates are still through the, through the roof. We know that the human placenta produces ketones. So for the mother to be in a ketogenic, on a ketogenic diet is ideal. But think about this. Think about this, folks. The missing link here is beta-hydroxybutyrate. And if the mother can increase her beta-hydroxybutyrate, a ketone delivery to the fetus, that's where these guys come in. And I know I, I harp on this all the time, but I've never thought of this as a connection. This is ketone IQ. This is an exogenous ketone. And based on this research, this data now, while the mother should be in, the ideal mom should be in a ketogenic diet, she should be low carbohydrates, high fat, high protein. She should be taking a prenatal vitamin. She should be taking her fish oil with a DH, high DHA. But I also believe that there's a significant advantage, especially in the first um, 15 to 16 weeks, for the mother to take some form of ketone ester, ketone salt, or beta hydroxybutyrate. And the ketone IQ will definitely, definitely get that mother into higher level of ketones for a prolonged period of time. So if she's drinking that once or twice a day or having half a bottle in the morning, half a bottle in the evening, that is going to provide adequate ketones for that baby's brain development together with putting the mom in a ketogenic space where she's generating more and helping the placenta to generate even more ketones. Because these fetuses and newborn babies are always in ketosis. And there is no downside, there's no harm to this. So I called up my friend Lat Mansur, who works for Ketone IQ. And we talked about this. And he said, you know something else that's very interesting. And I didn't know this. And that is that exogenous ketones, whether it's Ketone IQ or any of the others, I just personally prefer Ketone IQs with the experiments we've done, but I'm not pitching it or selling it. But exogenous ketones are used by a number of cancer patients for suppression of nausea during chemotherapy. It's an anti-nausea medication that a lot of cancer patients take when the, when the chemotherapy medications give them nausea. I did not know that. And how, what, what am I, why, why is that important? Because the time, and I know my wife suffered with this, the time that most women have the shittiest diet when they're pregnant is from that first four to six weeks onward to about the 12, 15 week mark because they have emesis gravidarum. They have terrible morning sickness. And if the ketones, and I would urge, I don't know this for a fact yet, but it's a correlation. I'd love to hear from pregnant moms. If those pregnant moms are using ketone supplementation, ketone IQ or ketone ester or ketone salt, exogenous ketones, to deliver a higher percentage of ketones to their baby's brains for brain development. And also it has an effect on 
Uh, morning sickness. I would love to know if ke exogenous ketones improve or ketogenic state improves your morning sickness. Please, please, please do the experiment. Give me feedback. Because this is something we can then pass on. But to my mind, the healthiest mom is one who starts out on prenatal vitamins, takes her three omega fatty acids, especially with a high DHA, and then is on a ketogenic diet, and maybe supplements with exogenous ketones. That is the ideal environment for a healthy fetal brain development, particularly up until about 15, 16 weeks of age, where the placenta takes kind of a backseat and the liver and the pancreas of that fetus take a front seat in terms of organogenesis. But folks, this is all coming together and we're able to put the science together. You see how my brain works? And as the final paragraph that I wrote to, to Sarah Rice is this. So I wrote... Particularly with regards to the fetus, on a pure scientific basis, our evolving knowledge of the placenta as a dominant metabolic organ, I've used the term parahepatic, like a liver, that appears to be intermediary between the first trimester organogenesis and the ability of those evolving organs to take over control of fetal function. For example, the fetal brain, as I said, 5 to 6 weeks, the liver at 15 to 16 weeks, the placenta appears to fill several intermediary roles regulating substrate provision to the fetus. There is a symbiotic relationship with maternal provision of base nutrients, but the placenta is increasingly being implicated as having a regulatory role. So as we go through this, sadly, as you stated below, this new knowledge is merely a whisper against the thunder that is the economic pseudoscience feeding carbohydrate addiction. This is why developing a parallel healthcare system, a system based on metabolic health science, that people can voluntarily sign up for is so important. To that end, we have the fledgling makings of such a pathway. We have the textbook Ketogenic. We have the practitioner organization, SMHP, Society for Metabolic Health Practitioners. We have the practitioner education system, the Nutrition Network. We have the metabolic uh, specialist practices such as mine and others. We are now in development, in the development phase of a global healthcare system based on this metabolic healthcare narrative. More to follow in the space. But we want to coordinate and finance all of the above into a single global healthcare system led by a new set of healthcare insurance companies and coordinated centrally. That's what we're busy building. And instead of placing the onus on government and similar organizations for optimal health, with a variety of competing interests to lead healthcare direction, this is a system that allows each individual member of society to choose their own healthcare pathway. An epiphany based, where each of us has the epiphany of changing our eating behavior and improving our health. And we want human beings to become little Benjamin Buttons, reversing aging, reversing disease as we reverse the illnesses we cause to ourselves, back to the restoration of health, following a carbohydrate addiction, substrate provision, eating pattern. I am the Carb Addiction Doc. I know this has been a deep dive into, into nerdy science, but it's so important, especially for pregnant mothers. And if you're pregnant, if you're thinking about getting pregnant, hit us up, get a consult. 561-517-0642. If you like our thinking, if you like what you're doing, show us support, leave comments below, but also throw us a buck or two at our PayPal account that's in the show notes. Till next time.